Uh, well, it's been a, been a very busy day. There's been a lot, a lot of discussions. I've been surprised with the the movement, I guess, in, in the industry. And, and we've obviously um, sold out today, and we had to probably turn away about a hundred people. So, I guess a, a quick synopsis of my my notes from the day would be the, the the race is wide open in terms of derivatives. There's there's three or four main leaders. You've obviously got Ammonia. You've got um, your DME, you've got LOHC, and you've got methanol. Um, there's a lot of work still to be done on understanding the carbon intensity of those different pathways. Ultimately, we're, we're talking about decarbonization, so it, it is about um, understanding that carbon intensity because that, that's not clear yet, and that will only become clear with time and the innovation of technology. Um, Derivatives are there for a reason, as I said, to, to, to decarbonize, or actually a word that came up quite a lot was defossilization, because obviously if you, if you talk about methanol, there's still carbon in the system, but it's, it's taking that carbon potentially off biogenic s uh, sources. So yeah, de defossilization was, it was a term that was repeated a couple of times. Um, these derivatives are focused on hard to electrify sectors. Um, so that was interesting. So previously we've been hearing about hard to abate, but now very specific about where where we can't do things with electricity, we can do them with derivatives. Decarbonisation of the ammonia industry as a starting point. Ammonia is obviously a, a you know, big market, predominantly helped to supply the fertiliser industry. So decarbonising um, ammonia, decarbonising the fertiliser industry um, is is a challenge and is a is a target to to help. Um, reduce uh, you know climate change uh, it's a challenge specifically because you want to decarbonize fertilizers but you don't want to rise uh, lead to a rising food prices um, we've obviously seen an impact on fertilizer production because of the Ukraine war uh, and actually with um, the greater uh, availability, I guess, of green hydrogen. It's going to allow countries, particularly big agriculture consumers or producers like Brazil, Morocco, etc., to produce their own um, fertilizer industry. So that's that's the sort of benefit um, in terms of widening, uh, I guess, the availability and the commercial uh, opportunity for fertilizers. Um, beyond that, uh, we see the the need to scale. Um, Particularly on that decarbonisation of fertilisers, there could be certain sectors that could help scale. So people were mentioned, I think, um, offline in terms of green beer, or there are certain product sectors that could help uh, afford a green premium uh, and therefore scale those technologies into decarbonising ammonia without impacting, you know, basic commodity prices like wheat and and um, grain prices. A lot of discussion around maritime shipping as a major sector to, to benefit from, from um, derivatives, obviously a, a key, a hard to electrify sector. Um, again, a, a, I guess a foc focalize it, focal, focusing around de decarbonisation, uh, but defossilisation. So obviously the use of green methanol. We've seen methanol announced in a number of um, uh, big announcements from major, major shipping firms interested in methanol. Um, but there is also recognition that ammonia has, a, has an advantage at the moment. There are 120 ports that are able to handle ammonia around the world today, and there's about 170 ships that can ship ammonia. So ammonia has a head start in actual infrastructure, but methanol could, could be um, fast uh, catching up. Uh, finally, there was discussions again around shipping, the, bunk the, the practicalities of bunkering and the importance of setting up green shipping corridors basically looking at some of the key target points around global maritime trade. So talking about Chile, Argentina, Panama, uh, the Suez, Cape Town uh, as sort of key nodes in the, in the shipping network and setting up uh, opportunities to allow uh, green fuels to be in those key destinations to set up these green shipping corridors. Uh, and then finally, I guess there was a good discussions throughout the day around aviation, again, hard to electrify sector. Uh, so yeah, basically a, a, a lot happening uh, and lots, uh, lots still to discuss, discuss for the next um, four days. So I think that's day one of World Hydrogen Week done. So many thanks to all the speakers, sponsors. Uh, it's been a great day and we look forward to more tomorrow.